Do you agree luck is a good thing? Uh, join me on another journey and imagine yourself now in 1992 in Leningrad, former Soviet Union. As you open the door, you bump straight into my back. And you see me uh, sitting on this piano stool between the door and the very fragile 19th century coffee table. Behind the coffee table there is a massive oak bookshelf with lots of books behind the glass. To your right you see an old piano, then another bookshelf, a window overlooking the sea, a large mirror from the 19th century, a, a sofa, and a kind of side of furniture with, with a green, big green phone on it. And you see me building my violin, and you might be wondering why am I building my violin on my lap? Well, the thing is, I didn't have a bench, and I even didn't have any violin making tools. The few tools that I have had were all made by myself from fingernail files. Suddenly the phone rings, and I pick it up. Yes? Oh, Vladimir Andreevich, hi. Thank yeah, good, good, yeah, thank you so much. Yes, I'm carving the violin now. Exactly how you taught me. Mm -hmm. Oh, books on... what kind of books? <laughs> yeah, of course, I don't have any books on violin making, so yeah, I'm interested. And where does she live? Really, you're joking. So it's exactly where we have our countryside house. Yeah, of course, I'm interested. Yeah, 100%. Thank you so much. Yeah, I will go there tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah, and I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The next morning, you see me jumping on the train from Leningrad to that small village. It's early September. It's dry. It's bright. It's golden autumn. Imagine this very old railway carriage. It is all made in wood. Inside it is painted kind of ridiculous <laughs> green. And the train is going at the speed of maybe 30 or maximum 40 kilometers per hour, stopping at each birch. The windows are opened and you stretch your arm through the window to a handshake with the birches growing by the rail. And the air. Pine, fallen leaves, all this golden and red colors, smell of mushrooms, wonderful. An hour later, we arrive at exactly this railway station, and then just a short walk, and you are in front of this dacha. Imagine, well, quite dilapidated. Once upon a time, maybe it was blue, but now it was kind of green gray, unknown color. Only the window frames are painted bright white. You open the door and you enter through a glass veranda. The floor, wooden floor, squeaks under each step. Finally, you turn right and you enter into the living room. In the living room, it's a little bit dark and it is completely filled with cartons and boxes and chests. Obviously, someone is moving. And there, right in the middle of this room, imagine an elderly woman with surprisingly bright silver Hair, very long, wavy, with a colorful scarf on her shoulders. Hi, Dimitri! So good to see you! I heard so many good things about you. You know what, Dimitri? I just started to feel a little bit old because I'm 92. I decided to move and live with my great-grandchildren. Good gracious, I think. This girl is 92 years of age and she just started to feel a little bit old. I wish I would be that healthy mentally and physically when I am 92. Dimitri, sit next to me, let's speak. And then she shares with me story after story and she talks like someone who didn't speak for 30 years. And you see her sharing stories of Rostropovich and Shostakovich and Bravinsky and uh, Prokofiev, all these musical luminaries visiting her home in Leningrad, where she lived with her husband, Bella Orsi, who was a respected violin maker in the city and who passed away 30 years earlier. And then finally she tells, okay, Dimitri, let me show you what I have. Yes, Elizaveta Yagolevna, I would love to see your books. Oh, books, okay. And she opens a box and they are beautiful. Collector's items, great, rare books on violin making. I still have them. And I spent all my savings on these books. 1,000 rubles. That's all I had. Dimitri, but you know what? I also have lots of violin-making tools. Would you like to see them? 
Elizabeth Yakovlevna, you're joking. You have violin making tools? Of course I'm interested to see them. Look, I'm making my first violin without any tools. I have these tools that I made from fingernail files, and that's all I have. And yeah, I want to see your tools. Okay, Dimitri, well, follow me. Okay, well, here, this box, and this chest, and that chest. And also, here, look. Have a look, young man. <laughs> I see this chests filled to the rim with antique 19th century, early 20th century English handmade tools for violin making. How would you feel in my place? I felt like a small boy who just found a treasure chest. I mean, no, imagine. Rosewood handles, shiny brass fittings. It's a little bit rusty, but overall amazing condition. Elizabeth Yakovlevna, I want to buy all these tools. How much? Oh, it's $1,000. Um, uh, you mean 1,000 rubles? No, no, I do mean $1,000. Elisaveta Yakovlevna, well, $1,000? Where on planet Earth can I find such money? Maybe you mean rubles. Maybe we can do something about this. No, no, Dimitri, it is $1,000. Feeling crushed and very depressed, you see me going back to my flat in Leningrad. And there are, they are, my family. Dimitri, what is up? You just bought your dream books and you are so grumpy. What's going on? Yeah, you know what? This lady, she sells also violin making tools, but she asks $1,000. $1,000? She is completely mad. Yeah, I know it's a lot of money, but it's like my dream coming true. I really f feel like I want to borrow this money somewhere and just buy these tools. Dimitri, you cannot possibly do this. I mean, you will never pay this debt. Listen, I want to take you into the perspective. I want to show you what is going on because you might not understand what is all this fuss about because $1,000 is no money at all. Well, in 1992, US dollars were still barely legal currency. Just a few months before that, you would go to jail forever for owning some dollars. And on top of this, private property was just privatized. And that means that you could buy one bedroom flat for $1,000 in Leningrad or two bedroom flat for $2,000 or three bedroom flat for $3,000. Why? Because nobody believed that if you buy a property, the state will not come after your property and expropriate it yet one more time. Basically, I felt like she was asking $68 thousand dollars in today's money because this is what you would pay for one bedroom flat today in St. Petersburg. And while you see my family trying to talk me out from this deal and calling me crazy, I'm thinking, how? How can I make this happen? I pick the phone and I dial. Hi, Victor. Yeah, hi. How are you? Can you help me with five dollars or ten dollars? Anything? Great. Fantastic. Do you know anyone else who can help me? Well, just think of it. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll take phone numbers. In the next 24 hours, you see me dialing like 200 numbers of friends of friends and friends of friends. Borrowing $5 here, a tenner there, 20 bucks here. And basically, in these 24 hours, I was able to raise this $1,000, borrowing on average about $20 from some 50 people. And a day and a half later, there we are, back again at this beautiful dacha. Elizaveta Yakovlevna, I am here after your tools. Okay, Dimitri, so which tools do you want to buy? I want to buy all of them. And you see a monkey battle commencing in my mind. As I begin counting these green notes, my hands begin to shake and a cold sweating. And there is this voice in my mind telling me, just stop it. You are done. You are an idiot. You are such an egoist. You will never be able to pay back this debt. You will go to jail. You will take all your family with you to the jail. You will all be broke because of your egoism and your foolishness. Just stop it. And there is another tiny, tiny whisper in my mind. The universe is trying to give you a helping hand. Just do it. Your dream. 
so I did it. And this story went viral somehow. And in the next few weeks, I got so much order, so much work, repair, repair, new instrument making, that in absolutely no time, surely for less than in 12 months, I was able to earn back all this money, pay back my debt, and make some savings to um, move later to Brussels in 1994, just two years after that. And that very first violin that I was making, that I began with tools made from fingernail files and completed with these beautiful English handmade tools from Bella Orzi, got a diploma at the violin making competition in Moscow in 1992. And here is the most important thing. As a result of that story that I have just shared with you, I have learned this. You can always choose your internal power to decide you want to achieve your goals rather than stick with external limitations such as a lack of time, lack of money or lack of skills. Luck is a handmade thing. Are you with me? Are you getting this very important message which you can also share with your customers?